In the last module, we looked at the difference between average velocity and average speed. And while it seems straightforward, uh, we found that if you simply rely on your intuition instead of the exact definition of these terms, it can lead you into problems. And so here I'd like to just do a simple, a single example. And this I call sort of the classic uh, average speed trick question. And the question is this. Let's say you drive 30 miles at 30 miles per hour. So how fast must you drive the next 30 miles 30 miles to average to have an average speed to have an average speed of 60 miles per hour. Now here you may want to pause to be able to calculate this, to think about this and determine um, what the answer to this might be, to take a few minutes. So how fast must you drive the next 30 miles to have an average speed of 60 miles per hour? And so if you answered 90 miles per hour, well, you would be wrong. In fact, if you answered any finite number, you would be wrong. The answer is, it cannot be done. Or you might say, infinity. You cannot drive fast enough, not even the speed of light for the next leg would get you an average speed of 60 miles per hour. So how, how does that work? Let's, again, take a look at the problem and use our exact definitions of these terms. So we first go 30 miles, and then we go 30 miles again. And so we drove the first 30 miles at 30 miles per hour. So how long did that take? So for the first leg of the journey, we drove at 30 miles per hour. That's the velocity. And so uh, 30 miles over some total time in hours. And so we solve for delta t. Delta t is just then 30 divided by 30, one hour. So it took, at 30 miles per hour, it took one hour to complete the first half of the trip. So what we wanted to know, though, was the total. So for the total, we wanted to have an average speed of 60 miles per hour. So the average speed, 60 miles per hour, would be equal to the total distance, and the total distance is 60 miles. And so how long would we need to complete the entire trip to have an average speed of 60 miles per hour? Well, we can solve for delta t, and the answer is one hour. To be able to average 60 miles per hour for the entire trip, we had to complete the entire trip in one hour. However, in this example, we completed the first leg in exactly one hour, which meant we had no time left to be able to, to uh, complete the second leg at all. We would have to teleport to the end, essentially go infinitely fast to be able to have an average speed of 60 miles per hour. 
So this example will throws uh, people the first time they see it. And so w when you find an example that throws you a little bit, uh, it's worth exploring it. So how, how exactly does this happen and, and why does this happen? So let's, let's take a closer look. So I have, have two legs of this journey. Each is, is 30, uh, 30 miles. So let's say for the first leg, I'm going to, to I travel it at some, some speed, which I'll call V1. And I'm going to let V1 vary. I, I want to explore the, all the, the different speeds that I might um, use in the first leg. So the first leg has a speed of V1. And the uh, second leg, then has some different speed v2. So what must v2 be given uh, an arbitrary v1 such that the average speed is equal to 60 miles per hour. Okay, so we know that for the average speed to be 60 miles an hour, that means the total time must be equal to one hour. And so for the total time to be one hour, what is the time for uh, each leg of the, the, the trip? So if I call T1 the time for the first leg of the trip, T1 is the distance, which is 30 miles, divided by uh, V1 in miles per hour. And so the time for the second leg of the trip is going to be 30 divided by V2. I'm leaving off the units now for convenience. And I know that the total trip, delta T, must be equal to T1 plus T2. And that has to equal uh, Right, the total distance, 60 miles over the average speed that we want, which is 60 miles per hour, equal to one hour. Okay, so what this gives us is from this expression, we can find uh, the this leg um, the velocity for the second leg as a function of the velocity of the first leg. We can find V2 as a function of V1. Now, now why would I do this? Because I'm trying to look closely at this question that I was originally given. I was given V1, a, the speed at which I traveled the first leg of the journey. And what I was trying to find is V2, how fast I must drive the second leg, such that the average speed was 60 miles an hour. And I first calculated for a very specific example when V1 was equal to 30. And what I'm going to calculate now is a general expression. What would the second velocity be for the second leg of the journey, given an arbitrary value of velocity for the first leg of the journey? And when by calculating this function, I can look at this for a large range of parameters, and it, and it, gets, it gives me a better intuition about what the problem was, because I, I felt the answer I got the first time was, was surprising. Okay, so I can now uh, plug in my expressions for T1 and T2 into here, and I get uh, 30 over V1 plus 30 over v2 is equal to 1. 
And so I want to find v2 as a function of v1. Okay, so this takes some, uh, some algebra. And so if I calculate v2, I cross multiply on the left here, v2 plus v1 over v1 times v2 is equal to 1 over 30. Or uh, v2 plus v1 is equal to v1 v2 over 30. I, you might be able to do these steps in your head, but I'm just sort of uh, spelling them all out. And that gives us uh, v2 minus v1 v2 over 30 is equal to uh, negative v1. So I'm not going to factor out uh, my v2 because that's what I want to find. v2 is a function of v1. So this is now uh, v2, 1 minus v1 over 30 is equal to negative v1. And I finally have it, v2 as a function of v1 is equal to v1 over v1 over 30 minus 1. And so this is the sort of thing that a, a scientist and engineer will do all the time. Um, it's not nearly as useful to have an answer for a specific example as it is to have a, a general uh, formula for any type of input. Now, for any value of initial speed v1 for the first leg, I can calculate the speed v2 for the second leg such that the average velocity is 60 miles per hour. That was my initial condition. My average speed, sorry. Speed average was 60 miles per hour. So, if we were to look at just uh, some specific values of this, we find that, uh, and we can put this into a, um, uh, a, a calculator or a program to, to do the graph, but if we just look at some values, we find that V1 is equal to 90, V2 is uh, 45. If V1 is equal to 60, then V2 is equal to 60 v1 is equal to 50, then v2 must be equal to 75, v1 is 40, v2 is 120. So what, what's happening here? Let's look at the times for the first leg and the times for the second leg. Remember the, the time is uh, uh, 30 over v1, time 2 is 30 over v2. So the time one, if it's if I'm going 90 miles an hour, is just of a third of an hour. That gives me two thirds of an hour to complete the second leg of the journey, and I can calculate the second leg of the journey in two thirds of an hour at 45 miles per hour. At 60, the first leg takes half an hour, so the second leg should take half an hour, which I can do at 60 miles per hour. So now at 50 the first leg of the journey takes uh, three-fifths of an hour, which only leaves me two-fifths of an hour to complete the second leg, and therefore I need to ha be going 75 miles per hour to do it. If I drive the first leg in 40 miles per hour, well, that takes me 45 minutes. It takes three-quarters of an hour to complete the first leg of the journey. That means I only have 15 minutes or a quarter of an hour to complete the second leg, which is 30 miles. To do that, I have to be going 120 miles per hour. So you can see this starts to get really high. If I were to graph this, what I would see is that V2 as a function of uh, V1 here, if I look at this expression, has an asymptote at v is equal to 30. And so it diverges going to infinity 
at my initial speed is equal to 30. And if my initial speed is 30, that takes up the whole hour, and that's why I would have to go infinitely fast to be able to complete the second half of the journey. And so this is a, a really good uh, problem to become familiar with to really uh, understand how to compute average speeds using the definition instead of your intuition. That ends this module.